Hey everybody, welcome back to the K2N Online Paddle School. We're back here on YouTube and this week's paddle tip is talking about finding more resistance in the surf ski and kayak stroke and drills to help you find that extra resistance. This week's video is more or less a repeat of last week's video on resistance training in the outrigger canoe from the perspective of having two blades. In the kayak and surf ski, there are more things that we can manipulate in our environment to achieve this resistance training, which is not found in the world of outrigger canoe. I wanted to talk about the premise again, and then talk about how we can change these variables in surf ski and kayak specifically. Finding extra resistance in the paddle stroke helps us achieve and understand our movements and this connection with the boat. At face value, attaching bungee cords and tennis balls and concrete blocks to our boat to slow it down helps us find a lot more pressure. This pressure trains our muscles to be stronger going through that same movement. At face value, this is a good thing, but in putting these pieces together to really maximize your boat speed and your movement potential, there are inherent flaws. The primary goal of us taking our paddle strokes is not only to find pressure, but to find pressure as the boat is gliding very quickly. The faster the boat is gliding, the faster the water next to the hull is rushing, and the harder it is to make that connection with your body and the paddle. Adding in external factors to rob the boat of glide makes it easier to grab and find that pressure. Finding pressure when the boat is being slowed down unnaturally is not the same as finding pressure when the boat is moving very quickly. This distinction is very important to understand. Paddlers that have achieved a very high level by being a lifetime paddler and doing it as nearly a full-time endeavor, these paddlers can use this as a tool to potentially maximize their ongoing progression. But for many paddlers who struggle to find boat speed in general, using this as a tool becomes a roadblock in finding that next speed increase. Again, training your body to take powerful strokes when there is no glide is distinctly different than finding the same amount of power and pressure as the boat is moving fast and gliding in its natural way. There are other factors that we can manipulate to find this extra pressure in a more organic way that will transfer to ongoing progression. If you're already moving a boat beyond eight miles per hour or 13 kilometers per hour in a race setting, using external forces of drag to increase your capabilities, you already understand how to make a boat move fast. So you can separate these two training ideologies and maximize them. For many paddlers, how they train is how they race. And so if we are training in a non-organic way, now we begin racing this way and this overlap is a hindrance to making a kayak move faster. Looking at other sports and their training protocols, there are many instances where you can add in external forces to slow down the participant. At the highest level, many training protocols forego this ideology in lieu of having more drills. Sharpening your skills is the most important way to find that extra resistance in the water for paddling. In the world of swimming, they don't anchor themselves down to create this disproportionate amount of unnatural drag. They just focus on the little aspects of their stroke to put those pieces together over the long term. In paddling, we're looking for a very similar segmenting of your skill set. Paddling is not purely a wattage output contest. It is your ability to make the connection with the water and then put the power into the water. We can understand this if you find the strongest person at your gym and put them into a kayak, they are not instantly going to be successful just because they are inherently strong. It is a skill dominated sport and it dictates that we must hone the skill more than the muscular expenditure of the movement. So let's talk about the drills that I like to incorporate in that use your boat and paddle naturally and allows the connection of going faster to be much easier. The first way to find more resistance in creating more boat glide is managing your stroke rate. Making a kayak move 
fast by limiting how many strokes per minute you take changes how you approach the stroke. You have to get more out of each stroke, but you also have plenty of time to set up your body into great position each time. For these drills, I like to start the stroke rate at about 60 strokes per minute, which is one single stroke on either side per second. At this stroke rate, as you take the stroke, the boat is going to have time to accelerate with glide, and then it will start to lose its glide. As the boat speed begins to drop, it is now up to you to bring that boat speed back up with the next stroke. As you start that next stroke, you will find there is extra pressure at the front of the stroke because the kayak has lost its glide. Kayak though is operating in its natural way. It is accelerating and decelerating, it is gliding and losing that glide. An external force is not slowing it down, it is just na acting as natural as it is designed. You're looking for a specific speed to match with your stroke rate. If you struggle to move a kayak at five miles an hour as you're going 60 strokes per minute, it means that your connection with the water is inherently limited. Being able to get your boat up to seven miles per hour or closer to 11.5 kilometers per hour, this shows that you have a mastery of manipulating the glide of the boat with your movement. There is a proportionality to your drilling and your ongoing boat speed. As you introduce more strokes per minute and you go to 70 strokes per minute, this should proportionally increase. As you increase the strokes per minute, you have less time between each stroke to get into good position and keep that connection with the water, so it becomes a game of moving faster to achieve the same idea. You're taking the pressure that you're finding at the low stroke rate and you're trying to connect it naturally to your higher stroke rate. As you begin getting to 80 strokes per minute, the boat speed should proportionally go up. And as you're getting into your race pacing closer to 90 or even 100, this number should go up and up. If you struggle with boat speed at the lower stroke rate, as it goes up, it is all proportional. Getting high boat speeds at low strokes per minute yields higher boat speeds as we go up, as long as technique is not the limiting factor. The technique being having all of this good movement while moving much quicker. As the stroke rate starts to go up, making that connection, the water by the side of the boat is moving faster as the kayak is gliding. Finding and grabbing that moving water and propelling yourself past that point back to back. These are the building blocks that we're looking for to truly make a kayak move fast. In the world of surf skis and kayaks, the next variable that you can introduce into your training protocol to find more resistance in a natural way is by making your paddle longer. The longer the paddle is the sooner it touches the water in front of you the deeper it will go into the water and naturally it will want to go behind you just a little bit further this extra length and depth with the blade in the water allows you to feel and find this connection for longer finding that connection and having a one-to-one -one output of creating more glide from that interaction that is the distinctly different aspect that we're training for. The purpose is not just to find pressure and have a powerful downward stroke. It is finding that pressure and having a payoff in the boat gliding. That movement creates that glide and having a tool that is longer and finding more pressure from leverage helps you make that connection much better. You will use your muscles more by doing this. It's definitely a lot more taxing. But again, in training, if you are not moving a boat fast, doing this will help you move it faster. And it makes those connections of I'm doing this and this to create this outcome. The next aspect that we can manipulate is having boats that are inherently wider. 
their ability to glide through the water is hindered from their inherent width, creating a lot of boat glide with a boat that is wider. Again, this is a training tool. As you go to narrower boats, as long as stability is not an issue, you can proportionally move the boat faster over time. It seems like having an elite level boat and dragging an apparatus would be similar to having a wider boat. Again, its natural ability to glide even at a wider length is a distinct aspect of the paddle stroke that we need to lock onto. Many paddlers have a disconnect of their movement leading to boat glide. Having boat glide that is 1% less than one of a narrower boat is much different than pulling an external apparatus. It is an unnatural thing to add to the boat and it makes it a little bit different in understanding my movement yields this result. So we can control the stroke rate downward, we can have a wider boat and we can change the length of our paddle. The next drill that you can incorporate in is segmenting your stroke. Having drills that break down the stroke into different parts forces you to move the kayak with a limited movement. The first drill would be focusing on only the front half of the stroke, having a good setup, blade tip touching the water, and making that connection to the entire blade going into the water, and then trying to exit abnormally far in front of us. We want to think about just propelling the kayak with the front half of the stroke. If you can successfully make that connection quickly at the front, as you begin to exit earlier, you're still propelling the kayak forward. Like I talked about in the Outrigger video, it is very controversial to talk about the middle and the back of the stroke in a positive way. It is very simple as a coach to tell people to take the blade out sooner as most paddlers have the blade in for too long. That being said, there is still a back half of the stroke. And if you can master this aspect, this follow through of your movement makes the whole movement more dynamic. Focusing on the back half would not be rotating into the front, putting the blade in when your shoulders are square, and think about turning into the stroke and getting as much as you can from this back half. You will be surprised how fast you can move a boat from using only the back half of the stroke. So that would be setting up with both shoulders square, turning all the way into the stroke, and then as you set up the next stroke, making sure that we're not turned all this way, turn a little bit soon, then stick the blade in and work the back half. We just want to feel our movements completion with the leg drive, the hip, the shoulders turning, all of this equating to boat glide. Again, this is a drill, and ultimately we want to combine those two drills together of doing the front half and taking it all the way to the back half of that stroke. If you can move a boat fast using only the segmented portions, when you bring those ideas together, you can only go faster. Mastering each segment and converting it to gliding the canoe in a natural way, again, this helps us piece together what our movements yield in performance. The last drill to incorporate in is simply sprinting. If you wanna move a kayak faster, you need to spend time moving it at those higher end speeds. If you wanna move your kayak 10 miles per hour, but you spend all your training time at seven miles per hour, it is very hard to conceptualize movement to eight miles an hour, to nine miles an hour, to 10 miles an hour without living it. Spending time doing intervals puts all of these pieces together. You are trying to move your body as quickly as possible, finding as much pressure as you can through the stroke, 
as the boat is moving faster, there's more glide, this water is moving faster, the stability is being challenged. All of these pieces are coming together and if you can successfully put them together to move the boat faster, this inherent mastery is now helping you be better over a period of time. Sprint intervals is a great way to put all these pieces together and to see what your outcome is. If there are limiting factors of stability and technique and making that connection with faster moving water, it will show in your top end performance speeds. Spend time doing the drills, put those pieces together and put them into action during sprinting. Don't forget, check out the K2N online paddle school.com. We have over 200 videos outlining everything you need to know about paddle sports in general. We also have customizable training plans. Let me know what your goals are. And every two weeks, I will send you personalized workouts to do on the water. And we work together for you to reach your goals. We also have video reviews on the website. Send us some footage of you paddling. I'll break it down. We have some examples of that here on the channel. Under the videos of common mistakes in the surf ski and outrigger canoe, if you you want to be the subject of that video send us a video and we'll get you out thank you guys so much for supporting the youtube channel if you have any questions please use the live chat function on the website or you can email me anytime thank you guys so much again and we'll see you guys next week for the next paddle tip video